Deputy Smith, 30 seconds to yeah, put your question. Thank you very much, Deputy. Minister, as you are aware, um, successive peace and interreg programmes have been very important in region and development in the border region, both north and south. And of course, community groups and statutory agencies have been able to bring to, to completion projects that would not otherwise have been funded by the state. I am very anxious our, as our communities on both sides of the border that there is a clear message from government that successor programmes will continue post-2020. It is an important message that Thank needs you. to be sent out to communities both north and south. Thank you. Minister Cullens. Uh, thank you. Anke Hirlakazi said I propose to take questions 8 and 26 together. As the Deputy is aware, Ireland and the UK are partners in two EU-funded cross-border cooperation programmes, Peace and Interreg, which have a combined value of over €550 million Euro over the period 2014 to 2020. These programmes support social and economic cohesion and peace and reconciliation in the border region of Ireland and Northern Ireland. The two programmes are important drivers of regional development in a cross-border context, and through EU-funded cooperation, a range of organisations, North and South, have engaged in and benefited from a variety of cross-border and cross-community projects. Support for the two projects from the European Regional Development Fund is a key element of the EU's continuing commitment to the process of peace building and reconciliation in the region over the last quarter of a century. The Irish Government has been clear and consistent about its commitment to the successful implementation of the current peace and interreg programmes and to a successor programme post-2020. My officials and I have worked to ensure that this important source of funding for the border region continues post-Brexit. In this regard, in December, both the EU, December of 2017, both the EU and UK undertook to honour their commitments to the current peace and interreg programmes and to examine favourably the possibilities for future programmes. In May of 2018, as part of its post-2020 MFF and cohesion policy proposals, the European Commission proposed a special new Peace Plus programme that will build on and continue the work of both peace and interreg. I welcome this proposal and this will be uh, moved forward as part of the draft cohesion policy regulations and the multi-annual financial framework negotiations. And you will have a two minutes. Thank you, I thank the Minister for, for his response, and I welcome the fact that the European Commission is committed to a programme um, post-2020. My questions referred to, and asked the Minister if there is ongoing contact with the authorities in Northern Ireland and with his counterpart in Britain in relation to the commitment of the British government and also the commitment of the authorities in Northern Ireland. And unfortunately, you don't have a counterpart to speak to in Northern Ireland because of the antics of Sinn Féin and the DUP. Unfortunately, we don't have a, a, an assembly or executive working there on behalf of the people. But Minister, is there ongoing contact between your officials and their counterparts in Northern Ireland, and if you or your officials ongoing contact with the British Government in regard to their commitment to programmes post-2020. I think the programmes have been, since the mid-1990s, funded 85 per cent by the European Commission. They've been a very important source of a, an important funding stream for community uh, development on both sides of the border for infrastructure development. And I would like to know what is the commitment from the British at this particular time to a successor programme? Thank you, Akahirli. Uh, thank you, Deputy. Uh, so, uh, thank you, uh, Deputy, for acknowledging the work and progress that has already happened. Um, as you will be aware, uh, what we, in, in essence, have at the moment is an agreement to allow what is in place to continue um, up to uh, 2023, so things continue as they are. In terms of the engagement that we, we have with the Commission, um, uh, we have had extensive engagement with the Commission in relation to these projects. In terms of engagement that I have had with my counterpart in the British Government, Chancellor Hammond, I did have engagement with him across the period in which uh, decisions were being made regarding the continuation of these programmes up to that point. But I think it's only 
it is important that I be open with you now that this is an issue that is going to have to be picked up again in the context of the fact that we will now be moving into negotiations on the MFF in a really serious Thank way uh, across, uh, in particular, the first half of next year, and then, of course, in the context of dealing with uh, the uh, new Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. But my intentions are really clear. I know these projects work. I know they're valuable. I want to find a way of ensuring that we thank can you, continue to make progress with them. Deputy I, thank you, Kyle Regan. Thank the Minister again for his own commitment to, to the programmes. And could I say, Minister, in the post Brexit era, um, such programmes will never have been needed more. And I, um, it, the, there could be fragile relations, hopefully not, not between North and South. And I think it's very important in the dark days those of us who have been privileged to be public representatives for border communities. We worked with counterparts in Northern Ireland to bring projects together. Thankfully, there was great momentum behind the peace programmes and the interreg programmes. And there are many pieces of infrastructure right throughout the province of Ulster that were funded as a direct result of those programmes being in place that are bringing benefits to communities and individuals today. In the post-Brexit era, Minister, I would suggest that that would be needed again, unfortunately, because of the adverse impacts that Brexit would have on all of our island. And Minister, I, I would ask you to ensure that the value of these programmes is to the forefront in the many discussions that will be necessary at EU level and with your British counterpart as well. And I th you. You, you are aware that to draw down funding under any of these programmes, there's a huge amount of preparation has Thank to be done, you. quite understandably. And for community groups or statutory agencies to plan and prepare applications, they need to have a good Thank idea you. if such programmes will be in existence. And okay. I sincerely hope they will because of their importance. Okay, Thank you, Kairi. Final quick comment. No, and the, the uh, political analysis that the deputy has offered there, I think is a fair one. We all hope to avoid the worst of Brexit, uh, and we're all working to do that. Uh, and uh, you, know, you and your party have been very clear in their support for trying to ensure we can do that. But we are going to be moving into a very, very challenging period now across the next number of months in relation to us. And the value of these programmes will even be greater if the uncertainty grows. The greatest contribution that could be made uh, to our efforts in this area would be the restoration of the Good Friday institutions and the Stormont Assembly, uh, to have public representatives in Northern Ireland actively campaigning for and acknowledging the value of these programmes. Uh, it, it would be extremely important that that happens as we move into planning for the post-Brexit relationship you, that will exist in relation to these programmes. But I can assure you, Deputy, I have seen these projects, I know how valuable they are, and I will be uh, working uh, as hard as I can to ensure that there is a good future in place for um, the uh, kind of programmes that have made a difference to border communities. Okay, now